Istungon joke haya dega. Istungon joke haya dega. That means, uh, did you make it through the night? Okay. Uh, we don't have good morning. And uh, so when we say, uh, actually, we're just saying, did you? When we meet up with somebody, we just say, did you make it through the night? Okay. So that's um, that's one way of greeting for in the morning. Okay, this is for two. That was for one person. If you meet it with one, you say, But this is like I'm talking to you people, a group. That's more than one, more than two. Mm -hmm. Two or more. <laughs> that's, that's how we say it. Okay, since this is the beginning of a new class, we're going to go, there's some new ones in. So we're going to go back to sounds because you know how I stress sounds. And this will help anybody, <coughs> even past students. It's all, you never get enough of sounds, okay? Never enough. Because uh, this is where you get your tones. This is where you get your enunciation of the words. This is where you know that what you, you know what you're reading, what you're writing. Okay. Ah, that's a long sound. Ah. Remember now, uh, forget English and let's not say A because our language is sound. Ah, she, I, e, B, T, A, G, Li, Mi, Ni, O. Oh. Remember? O, oh, P, D, C, D, U, A, W, I, Y. Okay. When you do this, you're wondering, okay, like, yeah. You don't hear a Y in there, but when you put two of these sounds together, the Y and the U, uh, you'll get yeah. Okay? Yeah. Two and three letter sounds. Ja, G, J, Jo, Ju, Ja. And I want to remind you, every one of these sounds that we're going over makes a Muscogee word in one way or another. They don't have to be two, two of these put together to make a word. It can be in the middle of a word. It can be at the ending of a word. Of the of a word, okay, and if you'll get to know that your language is sounds, sounds, that's all it is, and and I call it words, but actually they're sounds, and I'll show you that here in a second. I'm gonna prove that. Fa, fi, fe, fo, fu, fa, ga, gi, ge, go, gu. Ka. Ha, he, hey, ho, hu, ha, la, le, le, lo, lu, la, ma, me, me, mo, mu, ma, na, ni, ne, no, nu, na, ba, be, be, Bo, bu, ba, sa, si, te, to, su, ta, sa, si, se, so, su, sa, da, te, te, to, tu, da, wa, we, we, wo, wu, wa, ya, ye. Yay, yo, you, yeah. Ah, if, if, of, oof, of. Ah, ik, ek, ok, ok, ok. Al, il, el, ul, ul, ul. Am, im, aim, um, um, um. On, in, in, un, un, un. 
ab, ib, eb, ob, ub, ab, as, is, es, os, <laughs> us, as, at, it, et, ot, ut, at. <laughs> okay, look here. Two syllable words, the one that we just went over, okay? Look how many words it's made. This is one sound and put the two letter sound to it. You got ayo, ayo, hawk, afki, harmony, jimmy, you, trophy, Rabbit. Okay, let's go back to sounds. This language is sounds, isn't it? It's sounds. So, you know, so learning these sounds is the key to pronounce it, okay? Because jofi, that's two sounds, jofi, that's rabbit. Chula is a fox. Chalo is a trap. Chukwa is a mouth. Jadi is red. Every one of these sounds you just went over. So our language is sounds. It's like, um, it's not like grunting, squealing, anything like that. But you have heard where, you know, some animals use sounds to communicate. And like, a, uh, say a cow, they got a certain sound that their calf knows what sound they are. They can find their calf that way because they got different sounds. Ours is sounds too. Ours is sounds. And it's not like we're animals. I'm not trying to compare this to animals, but what we are is we speak with sounds. And that's why I push and push sounds okay jadi we went over this jadi is red jogo house see how these sounds are coming in ushki rain oba ow oji hickory odo remember o and do odo those two sounds actually makes a chestnut. So see, we're sounds. We're sounds. For me, we. Boogie, finished or gone. Boxy, boxy, tomorrow. The only way you're going to get your pronouncing and enunciation right Learn sounds, learn sounds. That's the only way. And that's how come you get a lot of mispronounced words because they haven't been studying the sound. Or, and you know, it takes time. <coughs> it takes time. But if you got five minutes, you know, take that, that's that desire, you know, to learn. Pigeon is budgie. We went through that in the sound. Budgie. Budgie. Bossy. Cat. Bossa. Bossa. Black drink. Some of the, and there are no silent sounds in the Muscogee language. So when you got two consonants together like this, you got to pronounce both of them. Bossa. Here you boss. It's got that his sound for the first one and sa for the second one. Boss sa. Look at this. Look, and there's a lot more words than this. But look how many words it's made, just these sounds that we went over. Ijo, dear. It ja. That D, you don't hear it, but you feel it. You can feel it on your tongue on top of the palate. It, ja. 
you feel it. And that's why I say that the Muscogee language is real prominent in the mouth. Pay attention to where your mouth is, your tongue is, your lips. It's real prominent. It just is a gun. Ida. Ida is another. Ihi is a husband. Ihi is a husband. Ina. See, there's a single sound, e. And then we went to that ni a, and that was na. Ina is a body. Fingi, blaze. Fojo, fojo. See, this is one word that I play on all the time. They'll say, fujo. Fujo. Fi, u, chi, o. How do you come up with fujo when it's fujo? And you can hear it. Fi, u, chi, o. Fujo. Fusky. Fi, a, si, ki, i. Fusky. And that's why I, um, I really discourage English phonetics. I don't, this is not English. And when you do English phonetics, you will never pronounce the Muscogee word to the exact. May help you out, but it's not gonna be the same because there's a difference between English and Muscogee. And that difference is, it's a different language. They're two different languages. So you can write something in phonetics, it'll never come, it'll never be the same. Once you learn your sounds, you won't need English phonetics. That's the thing right there. Once you learn your sounds, you won't need English phonetics. You'll never use English phonetics. You'll never need them. Once you learn this, you'll never need English phonetics. Fusky, sharp. Fusky, right. You can't hear the D in there, but you can feel it on the palate. But yeah, you can feel it. And misenunciation is the, probably the biggest problem that the language has. And that's not learning these. Very easy, you know, just go over them because we've been going over them and I stress it to the point of uh, redundancy and even to boredom, boredom. Some kids will say, oh, no, we're going to go over sounds again. Oh, no, I can't stand these sounds again. And I said, you will thank me <laughs> in a couple of months. You will thank me in a couple of months or maybe three. You will, the light will come on and you're going to wonder, okay, and you won't need English phonetics. A ni, a ni. Me, hear those sounds? A da, a da, snail. A ji, corn. A ha, potato. See, the half the world says potato. I want fried potatoes, I want, and they'll call it french fries. I want boiled potatoes. I want mashed potatoes. We say a ha. That's different. That's what we are. And people will say sweet corn, uh, cream corn. We say a chi. And what I'm trying to say is um, distinguish that from English. The whole world says corn. You say a chi. You say a chi. That's unique. That's different than thousand other people. Look at your language as something that's unique, different, and that belongs to you. Because when you say aji, that's yours. When you say corn, that belongs to the whole world. <coughs> you see what I'm saying? When you say aji, that's only for Muscogee people. You guys. But when you say corn, that belongs to half the population of United States. Half the population of United States. 
Okay? Make this yours. A buckeye. Allah. Allah. A wolf. Yaha. 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 When you put those together, it's wolf. But like I said, half the population will say wolf and you say yaha. That's yours. Yuppie. Okay, this says four, but this is yuppie like in a road or a tree branch like this. It's like this. Not a fork, not an eating fork, but something that's uh, like this is called yuppie. That's a fork, okay? That's a fork. Waga. See, that was in your sounds. Waga. Cow. Rat. Oh, what go? Raccoon. What go? What go? See how many words this lays? There's a lot more than this, but this is just half of it. This is not even half of our language. This is not even half of it. This is not even quarter of it, okay? We have so many, and once you learn these sounds, you break it up, and you can enunciate. You can enunciate, okay? Okay, look here. Is this making sense to everybody, like these two-letter sounds and two, three-syllable sounds? Are they making sense to everybody? Sock. We're going to do the three-letter sounds. Sock. Seek, sake, sook, sook, suck, lock, leak, lake, look, look, luck, moss, mees, mace, moss, moose, mus, mot, meat, mate, moot, moot, mut. Hawk, heek, hake, hoke, hook, huck. Hoss, he's, haste, hoss, hoos, hus. Mark, meek, make, muck, muck, muck. Mon, mean, main, mun, moon, mun. Hull, hull. Heel, hell, hull, hull, hull. Knock, neek, nake, nook, nook, knock. Fast, feast, face, force, boost, fuss. Jars, cheese, jays, jos, juice, just. Spa, speed. Spay, spo, spoo, spa. Sla, slee, slay, slow, slu, sla. Yeek, yeek, yees, yit, cheek, yan, yet. Chim, fin, gut, ma, gun, han. Bun, Loaf, vat, got, thies, ska, hal, hat, hum, shit, loaf, un, walk, sock, nit, peel, jock, walk, kit, fat, yin, ska, hun, thak, book, Luff, hook, dot, chief, sock. Okay, now let's go to this. Look here. Look at all these words that sounds makes. A hoagie. A hoagie. Doorway. Everybody says doorway. We say a hoagie. Our sounds, look here. A hoki. A he a uki e. A hoki. 
If you say it real slow and spell it, you can just about hear it. Ock. Okay, here we go. Ock. Hogi. A mud hole or a hole in the ground. Ock. Sufki. A deep hole. Ock. Sufki. See how that goes? Ock. Sufki. Pawn. Hasi. Remember, ak is down below. Uk is on top of something. Okay? That's the beginning. When you got ak, it's down below. Uk is on top. Okay? Jabofa. Jab. Look here. Jabofa. That's a feel. And all we did was sound. Everybody says feel, but we say jabufa. See how those sounds made, a, made the word feel? We're sounds, people. We're sounds. Our language is sounds. You got to learn these sounds. You have to. <laughs> I want you to make sure that you, I want you to, to learn them, okay? Well, that's in health. Jafik, it's a jafikni. That means healthy. Jafikni. Jump jaga. Jump jaga. While everybody else is saying bell, you know these sounds. You say jump jaga. Jump jaga. A boy. Jibani. Jibani is a gender boy. Jibani is like a name. For like, I, I call my grandson Chiban or Chibani. Chibani. That's um that's kind of what I named him. But now this and Chibani, that's the gender boy. Okay. That's the gender of a male, like a male gender. Okay. Bridal. Chuksaka. Chuksaka. Jabaki, Jabaki, angry. Janak, see, a ridge. Ipoji, Ipoji, look. Ip, you don't actually say the B, but it's right there, your lips are together. Ipoji, Ipoji. Sun. Ifigi, look at there. Ifigi. Don't sound like much, does it? But it's to us, it's his heart. It sounds. Ifigi. It sounds, guys. It means his heart. To everybody else, it, <coughs> it's gibberish. If we walked up to something, say Ifigi, Ifigi. To any other nationality, they don't think we're nuts. That's right. They won't understand. Ifigi, and they'll be like looking at us like, but if you walked up to a Muscogee person, say Ifigi, a heart. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Because it only, it, it's ours. Okay, it's ours. Uh, a child, like a baby. Istuji. Istuji. And that's actually just saying a little person. Isti is a person. When you put uji at the end, uji, -e, it means anything little, okay? Like istuji is a little person. Wagoji, remember, waga is a cow, but when you put uji at the end, it's a cat. Thako is a horse, but when you put thakoji, at the end, it means a, a little foal or a little a little Shetland or a pony, a pony, this with that or whatever. A uh, little foal. Handkerchief. Inochka. Inochka. So see, if you went to any other and say, Inochka, Odicha. 
or even if you use cream flesh, do you have a nochka? They're going to say, what the heck are you talking about? I don't know what that is, but I probably don't have it. But if you went to a Muscogee person and said, Inochka Ojicha, do you have a? Makes sense to them. But we're sounds, all sounds. Who is de mat? Is de mat? Always Imunga, Imunga. Before him, Ihoma. Behind him, Iyoba. Under him, Ilija. His brain, Igalbi. And what I'm get, trying to get across to you here is that these are just gibberish to the rest of the world. When you say Igalbi, you know, if somebody come and if I didn't know the language and somebody went Igalbi to me, I'd be like, what? But to us guys, it's a brain. These sounds represent a brain that nobody else knows. So I hope this understanding is crossing that you have to have sounds, okay? You have to have it. Humbida, uh, humbida, look. Humbida food. Pulwagi, batter ugly. Hachuji, a brook or a stream. Because a hachi is a river. But when you say hachuji, remember you got the uji at the end? It's a small river, isn't it? So you make it a brook or a stream. Hasatki, hasatki, clean. Obey. Ye, far away. Ha so sa. Hear that? Here's that double consonant again, so you got to do both. Ha so sa. He do the hook to ji. Hayak po. Hayak po. Harry. Ho bilga. Ho bil. Grave. Halbada. Halbada. Alligator. Hojida. To be like corn when you put it in that, um, in that, like a, looks like a stump. It's been burned out and that's where it, that's called hojida. To beat the corn. We see da. To stand. Hosida. Boil. Go jok ni. Look how I put these sounds together. Go jok ni, as in short and high. Okay. Go nawa. Go nawa. Beats. Gashapi. Gashapi. And this one, you can, by the tone, you can make it cold, you can make it freezing. So if I said, gasapidos, say cold. But if you said it was freezing outside, you would say, gasapidos. Guess what? It's extreme, isn't it, outside? See how that tone can change the meaning of the word. You can say cold, but you can also say it's freezing outside. Gasapidos. Hear that tone? That tone will change the meaning. To break, gajida. Now this is gajida like this one, something in half, like something long, a tree branch, or something to break like this right here, this little wad. I can break it in half. That's to break, gajida. Lobaga, lobaga. Okay, look here, here's some more. Is Baska is Baska broom. Igana ground. In look chi fruit. Imabi. This is separated from should be Imabi. A handle. Is liga gardener a hoe. Garden hoe. 
is bo ye. The last to the end. Inok wa. His neck. Is chokka. Is chokka. A pin, a right pin. Is sakka. A pencil. Is poga. And this is like for is poga means uh, to get rid of something. But so I think I, I would always think it was like lice. They call comb, you know, to get rid of lice. They combed it out for them. Indala. Rib. Now, indala can be a cow rib. Waga, indala. Pig rib, shoka, indala. Ribs. Go to rib crib and say, shoka, indala, and jack off. <laughs> They'll look at you like you're crazy. To drink. Iskida to die, Elida. A bottle, Falasco, Falas, be that Falasco. To whistle, foot, foot, Kida, foot, Kida. To blow, fo, fo, Kida. Beehive, fo, hoodie. Hoodie. To sprinkle. Fiski death. You know, you're not only learning how to pronounce these words, you're finding out what they are, ain't it? You're finding out what these words are. You know, you're learning two different things at one time. Two different things. And that's a cool part here. Mahaya. Uh huh. Uh <laughs> I'm getting kind of slow here. Um, back up there where you were doing uh, the pencil and the comb, I got uh -huh. lost. Uh, okay. Could you do the comb again, please? Okay. Comb, this right here is called ish boga. Hear that? See, we went over these sounds. E C B O G A. Ish boga. Remember the bo? In that our two letter sound and ga, they were in there. It's boga. It's that's um, actually a comb that we use to comb our hair. Iskashka. Iskashka or skashka. That's the one that I've always learned, and that's what it yeah. told me when you were yeah. using. This is yes. more like iskoga. It's kind of like saying that gets rid of stuff. So that's how come I was saying it could have been like a bug, you know, like lice or something. It's full of, because you could comb your hair out with it. But I've always known it as Iskashka. Iskashka. Uh -huh. Yeah, Iskashka. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now that's the one that I've always heard. And yeah. like you that's said, there's, when they use uh, the one for getting rid of something, um, you know, like you said, like getting rid of lice or something like that. Um, I'm hearing it, but uh, it's not quite the sound that I've always heard. So uh, that's why I was quite learning. That's where I got lost. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Ishkashka. Big up, rest. He so see. Now this can be changed with tone too. You can say, "Hook uh, the he so see those." This girl is pretty. A girl is pretty, but you can make her gorgeous. Hook the he so see those. Hear that tone? <laughs> he so see those. That changes from pretty to beautiful, from pretty to gorgeous. See, just by the tone, by the tone. You can say, you can say that girl is pretty. But if you say, you're saying gorgeous, beautiful. See, that will change that. Medicine. He liswa. 
Hiliswa. Honanwa is a man. Honanwa is a man that is gender, okay? This is gender right here. Honanwa, it's a gender. Hathisi, see there's a double consonant. Hathisi, the moon. Liquid, to run. Lay, gid, hear that? Lee, a, lay, gid, to sit. More just see, new. More just see. Malum ha, malum ha, that's a button. <coughs> Mahinwa, truth. Malaga. This is a patch now. That's like pant, you know. That's like when you're patch patching your jeans with holes in them, which they don't do that anymore. That's cool right now. But they used to patch your pants up and they called it Malaga. Modisa. Jug. See, everybody says jug. And if you walked up to somebody and said Modisa, they're not gonna know. In this whole world, Modisha, except Muscogee people. Oh, Modisha. Modisha. It's a jug. Mahida, to grow. Nogufti. Okay, this says go blur around it, but Noguf. Look at that. Nogufti. Nogufti is a fist. To make a fist. Okay, to make a fist as in, you know, like a fist. So that. I, I don't agree with that. And I, I'm very, I, I disagree with some things. <laughs> no, gofti means to make a fist. Gobler around it is boloksi. Okay? Boloksi. But a uh, fist is no gofti. Bear, no gushi. No gushi. Well, everybody's saying bear, you're saying no gushi. But if you talk, if you went to the zoo and told somebody Nogoshi, what do you think they'll say? They don't know and they don't care. But to you, it's Nogoshi. Uh, horse, Noksongi. Noksongi. So anytime, you know, you can break up a 16 letter word into sound and pronounce it. And I had to do that once. There was a word in the Bible. Uh, the person that was reading it, he was getting tongue-tied, which we do. We will get tongue-tied sometimes and can't say a word that we've been saying all our lives. We'll get tongue-tied. He got tongue-tied. He said, I can't say this for the life of me. I can't say it. So I said, write it down for me. He wrote it down for me, and I sounded it out to him, and he said, what it is. Once we broke the sounds down, now he was a fluent speaker. Once we broke the sounds down, he pronounced it right on a dot. But see, sometimes you'll get tongue-tied and that's what he was doing, but I had to break it down. Yes. He, yeah. <laughs> yep. That's true right here, this question. There's no marks, and marks can be very complicated. Um, I went through, uh, uh, when you mark your, where you're emphasizing everything, it's, uh, it's complicated to do that. It just kind of makes you, uh, and I have, on certain papers, I have emphasized and put marks in there. Commas, um, mostly, um, um, like, not commas, uh, apostrophe. Apostrophe on one that needs to be um, emphasized. But to me, that just made it more complicated because there, a lot of them don't know. And they'll say, what's this apostrophe here for? You know, so it's not really apostrophe. It's a, um, 
to emphasize that certain one and it, get, it can be really complicated. And we'll learn that maybe later. Okay, we may learn that. Um, pelican. Pelican is a um, descriptive word. Nook is short for nookwa, for neck. Sokja. Nook sokja. Sokja is a bag. It's saying a uh, neck bag. <laughs> Nook sokja. Nojida to sleep. Nisida to buy. Okay. Nisida is an infinite affinitive verb to buy. You can only use that during a certain time, like um, I'm going to buy a car, but you're going somewhere, okay? You can say I am going to go buy a car. You're going, and this not means you're going, uh, you, you're, it's saying you're going to uh, go to town to purchase a car. But that's about the only time you can really use this is during that, and we'll use those two here soon. There's so much to this language that I don't want to overwhelm you. So we're just kind of take it a little bit at a time. O malga. O. O malga. All or everybody. O bushwa. This one can be used with tomatoes, a uh, uh, tomato, a uh, bushwa, yalaha, a bushwa, fasco, a bushwa, um, orange juice, grape juice. So you can do that. Othanga, othanga, letter of cover. Oktaha is said. Oktaha. Osa. Osawa, a crow. Look how many words there are, guys. I, I just can't, I just can't believe all these words, you know, and and that just sounding. And it's nothing that most people, when we say igalbi or hombida, it's nothing but to us, it means something, then it? it means a valuable something. It's valuable. This language is valuable. You can't put a price on this language and think you're going to get. There is no way. You can't even estimate the price of this language. I couldn't. I wouldn't even ask anybody to say, um, how much you think this language is worth? There's no number big enough for what this language is worth. There's no number big enough for what this language is worth. And you're learning it. You're learning it. You're learning it. Okay. Let's do... Okay. Okay. Hi. Okay. Look here. <clears throat> Okay, um, we're going to start learning how to use. We're going to study verbs because we're verb prominent, and I know we went over, but there's some that's new here that we need to uh, teach. And we need to go, we don't want to leave anybody behind. So we're going to use verbs here soon. We're going to start doing verbs. In fact, it's on my lesson plan and uh, basic pronouns. And you know, we didn't, we weren't taught. They didn't say, this is a verb, this is a noun. They didn't teach us that. We just spoke a way of life. You know, speaking for us just was our everyday way of life. So we're going to do that here as the weeks come on. Like, uh, we may just, I may just... Uh, Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. 
So, you know, um, when I look at this and, you know, just kind of sit and say some of these words and you kind of get this feeling of um, like how how did corn become edgy to our people? How did pretty become heathlesy? Remember, we were the first language on this continent. We were already speaking the Muscogee language when we had European contact. We never heard English into a European contact and we were speaking this language way before European contact. It's old, <clears throat> it's ancient, and we're learning. You know, uh, some of us will, you know, I've seen her people say, oh, we found dinosaur bones. In fact, I was looking at a documentary the other day. They found this a uh, foot. And I mean, they were so careful with it when they, they used toothbrushes, paintbrushes, trying to move the dirt out and they was trying to preserve this thing as much as they could. And they said that thing was millions of year old, millions. And man, they were, shouldn't we be like that with our language? Shouldn't we protect it? Shouldn't we um, um, be fragile with it? And you know, they said this bowl is probably worth millions. So is our language. Who knows? We might have been there at prehistoric times. We don't know. Because they have found people in it that was born in the ice age, wonder if they were American Indians. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? There's questions, you know. So when you say these words and uh Learning. Think about what goes along with your learning. You know, uh, get your, uh, not just language. Don't just think I'm learning this language. You're learning something that uh, was at the beginning of time. You know, at the beginning of time. And you're, you're taking care of this. You know, you discovered something. You discovered something that... Uh, was valuable. And that's how I look at language. I, I look at it, and, and you, you know, I told you I got this passion about language. That's how I look at language. I mean, it's something that's really can't put a price to. You can't put a price to it. Okay. Let's do, I don't know what else. We're going to do, I know we're going to do uh, verbs, because verbs, Verb, verbs is something our language is a lot, it has a lot of. <laughs> With the stick. I got a stick. <laughs> We're cut a little bit. Oh, there we go. Okay. Verb. Come up. Ah. Okay. See, this infinite, I'm going to have to go through infinitive verbs. And you know, they said it's like English, but kids seem to learn faster this way. Infinitive verbs is like hijida. 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 It's got the e t a at the end. Okay. e t a at the end of hijida. But when you're doing something, when you are looking at it at this moment, Present tense. He just 
you drop the E, D, F, and add A, C. And you can, right here, says I'm looking at a rainbow, you say, Uski in he just, okay? So that's some of the things that we're gonna learn um, so that we can, uh, you can start saying things, okay? Okay. This is past, past, because words change during present, past, and future. You're going to learn those. You're going to learn a lot, okay? You're going to learn a lot. Okay, look here. This is where we're going to study, right here. To quit is wegida. It's got the e, e, a at the end. And these are verbs, guys. This is an infinitive verb. Wegida. Command. You drop the e, d, a, and add a, c. Wegas. Quit. That's telling somebody else, quit. Okay. This one is, I am quitting. Wegas. Way guess you're adding the AC at the end to say you are quitting. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Infinitive verb nojida. Nojida to sleep. You and when you telling your baby to go to sleep. It's a command, so you drop E, D, F, add a C to it, and you say, no, just go to sleep. BB, no, just go to sleep, baby. No, just, you're saying go to sleep. But if you say, I am sleeping, you drop the E, D, F, and say, no, Jess. No, Jess. Anytime you got to add the AC right here to say you're doing something. <clears throat> That's all it is. And if you look at your dictionary, there's a lot of infinitive verbs in there. I will say to jump because we're verb prominent language. Okay. We're verb prominent language. So if you say, Aglobida, to bathe, this is to right here, E D A, to bathe. One, to bay. But when you, this is an infinitive verb. To bay. Up, low, be, da. Okay. To make it a command, you drop the E, D, A, and a, C. And you say, Aklobus, take a bath. You're telling somebody to do it, a command. Okay. Okay. Then, but if you're taking a bath, you're doing something. Remember, we're very prominent. You are doing something, so you say, Aklobes. Aklobes. You're doing it. Mm -hmm. Remember, even just sitting, where it's a verb. So if you're just sitting, you say, lay gas, okay? Here we go. Home be da. See how I'm breaking these sounds up? Home be da. To eat because this is two. Eat the up is two. Two. So home be da to eat. Okay. You're telling your child or your husband, your wife, whatever, to eat. I tell my dog home bus when I'm taking a dog food. Okay. Home bus. It's a command. By dropping the E, D, A, and adding a C, it's a command. So you're saying E. You're telling somebody to eat. Okay. But if you're eating and you're doing, you change the infinitive verb, E, D, A, to A, C, and says you're eating homebase. So you can say, Oshavki, Humbes. Oshavki, Iskes, Andri. Oshavki, Hayes, I am making. See? 
That's all it is, guys. Infinity verse. Ah, lay get up to get up. Now this is every. This was every day for me this past school year. All lay get up. See, I'm making a command, ain't I? I'm asking somebody to do something. Alegus. Alegus. I tell my grandkids, alegus. And that is get up. Okay, but if you're saying alegus, I am getting up. Alegus. Remember, anytime you're doing something, it's got to have this AC at the end. Can we see the slide on the past, present, past, and future verb? Yeah, we will get to that. Um, I have those, and they change. Okay, let me kind of give you an example of future. Okay, a little bit of, it's too base. When you drop the ED up and tell somebody to do it, you say, a little bus. That's a command. If you say, a little bus, I am bathing. Okay. In uh, past, you add, you drop the et and add a uh, niki unks unks. Rem listen to it unks. So if you say aglo by unks, I took a bath. Aglo by unks. Home by unks. I ate. That's past. Future is thief, D-E-C. And we'll go over this. I'm just kind of catching on this. So, Ablo Bida is infinitive. Ablobas is a command. Ablobas, I am baby. But if you say, I did baby, Ablobayaks. Future. Aglobathis. Aglobathis. This future. I will take it. And those will change. And I'll try to get all these and put it together. And I, <coughs> I'll use this and put a simpler way, like uh, Aglobaz, I am maiden. Then I'll put, uh, I'll put past and future. Okay. Because this is present right here. You're doing something present. Past would be aglobayaks. Future is aglobathis. Aglobathis. Okay? All right. Uh, we will get on this, you know. Uh, which books are we supposed to buy to go with this? Are, we, are they written to fiction? Okay. This is just my teaching, guys. This is not, uh, <laughs> I teach this one. There are no books. I don't write books. <laughs> this is just my teaching as far as I speak. Remember, I just teach you how I speak. <laughs> I, I wish there was, but I don't, I, there's no, actually, really nothing. But I can, you know, that's how come these are typed. Mahaya. Uh -huh. Um, somebody earlier in the class wanted to know if you would introduce yourself because they're new to the class and it wasn't right. made clear. All right. Uh, Rebecca Barnett Doez, Mahaya. Yeah, it's Tijadi Bunaga Mahaya Doez. I'm Rebecca Barnett and I, I teach the Muscogee language. Um, yet, I'm a lusty dundo. Bunayan, Chahokta Ledi Dot. This is my passion. Um, and this is all I spoke. My parents, that's all they spoke. And so I spoke. It. But, um, and, and when I, Muskogee Bunaga, Songi Baha School, Mahaya Hando, where school met, I dug it said in this. When I found out this language was going away, my first thought was, I'm going to teach this. I'm going to teach this. And that's why I started teaching. But what got the way? I'm a record fan. And I belong to the uh, 
to the Dugibachi tribal town. Uh, I'm a granddaughter and my, you know, um, my clan is a woodpo, which is raccoon. I'm a daughter. And you're going to learn this, guys. You're going to learn how to introduce yourself. Uh, 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 I'm the granddaughter to Atayachi. On the man's side, because this is a uh, mother, you always follow your mother, okay, on plans, always. We'll go through all this stuff. So I am Rebecca, and I'm Mahaya. Um, so you new ones in here, I hope you learned something, because I always guarantee my classes, you will not leave this class not learning anything. You will learn something. You will. You will learn something. I'll make that promise. Where's the language program? This is at the Muscogee Creek Nation Higher Ed Building. We're in the higher bed, uh, higher, higher ed building. But this is the Muscogee language program. We're from all right. Uh Hasistika, Sun Measure. Hamgat, number one. We any bigger. Mado Jigget Jigget. I'm gonna say Mado to y'all. Are you behind us? I'm leaving. I got to go. <laughs> but I appreciate all of you guys taking this language class. There's a lot of respect that I hope for you people. Mado, you get guess, Jay. Mado, Mahaya. Mado, Mahaya. Mado, Mahaya. Mado, Mado. 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 from Hollywood, Florida. Oh, Mado. Madhu from Phoenix, Arizona. All right, Madhu. <laughs> Madhu from Escalon, California. All right, Madhu. Madhu. Madhu from Olympia, Washington. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 